and welcome back. In the previous episode, we were working on the vacuum tube computer and we wanted to make sure that the result register and the logic unit would uh, play together nicely. And uh, fortunately they do, everything seemed to work perfectly. And that means that uh, we're getting real close to having that vacuum tube computer up and going. Uh, but before I turned the camera on and I started filming that interaction between the two, I actually did a little bit of testing off camera of the result register by itself and of the logic unit by itself. And while the logic unit was totally fine, worked perfectly, the result register, which uh, I've got right here, actually gave me a ton of problems. Uh, there was an initial problem with my design where I had uh, two resistors overlapping, but that was pretty easily fixed with a, a quick bodge. But on top of that, there was actually three bad vacuum tubes on the board, which is just insane. Out of the hundred tubes that I've used so far for the entire process that I've built up to this point, I've had one, maybe two bad vacuum tubes. So to have three bad ones on one board is just crazy. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was so unexpected, I spent way too much time actually diagnosing my schematic and my PCB design because I thought there's no way that I could have three bad vacuum tubes, but uh, it turned out that there were three bad ones. And so that got me thinking, it would be nice if I could test these vacuum tubes out in an environment that is much more closely related to what the vacuum tube computer is going to be seeing, most notably, low voltages. Most vacuum tube testers out there are testing them at 100 volts or more, but I'm only working with 24 volts, and that's going to mean that the tubes behave wildly differently than they would otherwise. So I do actually have a vacuum tube tester. It's an old accurate instruments and it is incredibly inaccurate. Uh, but I wanted something that was at 24 volts that would give me actual accurate readouts. And so that's what I started diving into over the past couple of days. I kind of got caught up in this flurry of design and thinking about it. And uh, well, I've got something that I think is going to work pretty well. And I've got it sitting over on the bench. So we'll hop over to the bench. I'll show you what it does and how I use it. And then we'll take a look at what it actually is, how I actually built it. So let's hop over there and get started. All right, so I've got my uh, breadboard here with my very DIY low voltage vacuum tube tester set up on it. And you can see pretty much the brains of the entire operation is this little Arduino Uno here. And it's connected up to the PC through the USB cable. And you can see I have the serial monitor here with press button to begin posted on it. And the button it's referring to is this little black button here on the breadboard. And if I press this, it will test the vacuum tube that's plugged in, which is this little 6AU6 here, which is a known good 6AU6. So let's press this black button and see what happens. It says testing. And there we go. It says grid voltage from minus three volts to plus three volts in 0.5 volt increments, anode voltage with plate resistor of 33,000 ohms. And then it gives us a list of the anode voltages for those corresponding grid voltages. And you can see that we start in cutoff at 23.95 volts, 24 volts. And then uh, once the grid voltage gets higher and higher, we start to get into the transition stage where we drop down to 19 volts, seven volts, four volts, and then we hit saturation as the grid voltage continues to increase. So we know that this is a known good tube and this is exactly how it should be responding. <laughs> awesome. So our DIY tester here is working. So of the three bad vacuum tubes that we have, that's these three right here, uh, this one we don't even need to test because the getter on it is just completely gone and the filament wouldn't even turn on. So we can actually just throw it straight into the trash. Now the other two tubes are interesting. We're gonna start with this one and the getter is almost completely gone on it, but there's still a little bit of getter left and the filament does warm up on it. So let's plug this one in and see what it does. Okay, so the tube should be warmed up now. It still says press button to begin. So let's push that button and see what we get as results. And look at that, it is drastically different. We're in cutoff at uh, 23, 24 volts, uh, but where we should start transitioning down towards saturation, we just never get there. And with a grid voltage of plus three volts, we're only getting down to about uh, 15 volts for an anode voltage. We should be 
deeply into saturation at that point. So uh, this tube is just not giving us good emission. And I think that's because it's pretty gassy inside. Now this third and final tube is an interesting one because when I tested it in the actual result register, the output was stuck at 17 volts. And then while I was building this up to ensure that it was working correctly, I tested it on it and it was stuck at 11 volts. Uh, and I was going, awesome, this is gonna make a wonderful demonstration for the video. Uh, but I've, <laughs> I've run into a problem. Let me see if I can demonstrate that for you. So, uh, well, you can see that the results are totally normal, <laughs> but before it wasn't. I swear up and down, it was just stuck at like 14 volts or 11 volts or 17 volts. It just would not change. So the only thing that I can think of is that there was a little flake of material that was causing a short inside the tube for the first few times that I tested it and while it was uh, being used in the result register and plugging it in, unplugging it, and moving it around and tossing it around, uh, dislodged it. And so now that short is not there and the tube is working good again. And while this tube may not be the best uh, demonstration of a bad tube, it is a good demonstration of the strengths of having a tester that gives you actual data. All right, so let's uh, take a look at what it is exactly that I've built here. And uh, this is the schematic for everything that you see over here, with the exception of these two buck regulators here. And these are here because I actually need four different voltages. I need uh, 24 volts, I need plus 12 volts, plus six volts, and minus 12 volts. And these two buck regulators give me the plus 12 volts and the plus six volts off of the 24 volts that's coming in from my primary supply. Now I said that I needed four different voltages and I've got 24 plus 12 and plus six, but how am I getting my minus 12? And well, that's what this little 555 timer is over here. And you can see on the schematic, I've got it set up just essentially as an oscillator and a negative voltage pump. Uh, and so it's just essentially creating a square wave uh, that goes through this capacitor and these diodes here to generate a negative voltage. And uh, I said that I need negative 12 volts, but it doesn't actually get to negative 12 volts. I'm powering the 555 off of plus 12 and I get about minus 10 volts out of it. But that's actually plenty for what I'm trying to do because I'm really only trying to go from minus three volts to plus three volts on the grid. And that's the only place that I need the negative voltage. And in order to get the grid voltage to change from minus three volts to plus three volts automatically, I'm using the Arduino combined with a 741 operational amplifier. So the Arduino outputs a pulse width modulated, uh, essentially square wave that's coming into the non-inverting input of our operational amplifier. And then we've got a little voltage divider for the inverting input. Um, and then we've got a 22,000 uh, ohm resistor as negative feedback. Um, and so what this should do is it should change the output level in accordance with the duty cycle of the uh, PWM signal that's coming in. And then the uh, 6AU6 right here is the same one that's here, and that's the tube that is being tested. We can change this out with pretty much anything. So we've got a 100 ohm resistor on the screen grid. We've got a 33,000 ohm resistor on the plate, and the cathode and suppressor grid are tied to ground. And then our output is coming directly off of the plate. But we have an issue in that our output is going to change from about 24 volts down to about 2 volts. But if I stuff 24 volts directly into the Arduino, that's really just going to burn it up. So I've got a large voltage divider that's like a 4 and change to 1 voltage divider. And I made the resistors uh, exceptionally large so that all of this reading that's going on uh, doesn't actually affect the output that we're seeing at the plate here. So I can get as close to a real reading at the plate as possible. So that's the hardware side of things. Let's take a look at the software side of things next. The actual code that I have programmed into the Arduino to make this whole thing work. We have a bunch of things that we set up at the beginning. This is just like standard stuff for getting the rest of the program set up to run. The most important thing that we define in the beginning here is this uh, G array, which looks like a hilarious way of spelling Gary. Um, this is an array 
of integers that will control our PWM signal into the 741 operational amplifier. So what I did was I removed the vacuum tube and I measured the output of the operational amplifier directly and I changed the uh, values in this array until they gave me the exact voltages that I wanted. Um, so for example, a, a PWM duty cycle of 119 gives me exactly minus 3.01 volts. And so there was no real scientific reasoning behind how these uh, figures ended up like this. I just did it by trial and error, wrote down my results until I was happy. After that, we do a little bit of setup. Most importantly, we set up the serial monitor so that way we can output our data onto the serial monitor. And then we start our main loop. And then in the main loop here, we have a little bit of code that says uh, press button to begin. Um, and so it essentially skips all of the remaining code until we press that button. But when we do press that button, we start the actual test itself. And in the test itself, all we do is we uh, count from zero to 12 and we just set the PWM to whatever the specific value that we're reading out of the grid array is. And then we do an analog read of the voltage divider that's coming off of the plate. Then we just do a, a little bit of math to correct that voltage divider voltage. And then we store that value in another array called anode. And then once that loop is finished, we just do some uh, simple serial printing to explain what it is that we're about to see. And then we start one more loop that counts from zero to 12 again, and it prints out the values that are stored in the anode array. So it's incredibly simple code because I am a horrible programmer. So I need to keep it as simple as possible to keep my brain from melting. Uh, but it seems to get the job done pretty well. However, there is one major flaw here. Well, <laughs> there's probably more than one. Uh, but for my purposes, there's just one big problem with this. Uh, and that is that I would like my breadboard back. <laughs> I've got other projects that I need doing and I need the breadboard for it. So I need to somehow make all of this fit onto its own PCB so that way I can get my breadboard back. Uh, but on top of getting my breadboard back, it's also kind of a pain to change tubes. Uh, specifically, if I have a dual triode that I want to test, I've got to redo a bunch of jumpers here. So it would be nice if I could uh, have little modules that just plug in. Um, and so I, I've kind of come up with a design that I like, and it's really small. It's a 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter square. Uh, so let's head out to the garage. Let's fire up the mill and cut this out. And here we go, and it's actually a really simple PCB to make. But I wanted to make sure that everything was removable, so I, I kind of made these sockets for absolutely everything. First and foremost, we've got our sockets for our two little ICs here. This one on the right here is for the 555 timer, and this one on the left here is for the 741 operational amplifier. And then these uh, pin headers here, actually the, the majority of these are just totally blank. It's only the very end ones that actually have connections in them. And these are what the uh, buck regulators plug into. So this is the 12 volt one right there. And this is the six volt one right here. And then finally, we've got our little Arduino Nano that plugs in right there. All right, and that's everything except for the vacuum tube that needs to be tested. And so I wanted to be able to test a bunch of different tubes, and I figured the easiest way to do that, instead of making this thing infinitely configurable with expensive switches or anything like that, was just cut out tiny little PCBs like this that are uh, wired up slightly differently for each one. So this is for seven pin pentodes, and this one is for uh, nine pin dual triodes. And uh, these switches let me select between a six volt filament or a 12 volt filament. And these over here, let me select whether we're doing the left triode or the right triode. So all I gotta do is plug a vacuum tube into one of these. We'll start with a pentode and then plug that right into there. And now our entire thing is set up and ready to test. So we just gotta plug it into the computer. So let's slide the computer out and give this a test. All right, I've got everything hooked up. It's just a simple 24 volt wall wart that comes into our barrel jack here. Then we have a USB cable that plugs into Arduino Nano here. And that's 
it. We're ready to go. I've got the serial monitor up. It says press button to begin. A little red button right here. So we'll give that a press. Testing. And there we go. We get a collection of voltages that start from 24 volts and work their way down to about 1.7 volts. Now the numbers are a little bit different on here because the Arduino Nano handled its PWM a lot differently than the Arduino Uno. So I had to adjust all of the duty cycle numbers in the program itself. Uh, but this is working well enough that I'm pretty sure that these are the right numbers. Now this is going to work amazingly well for seeing how healthy tubes are. But also what it can do is it can let me test a bunch of tubes against each other to see how differently they behave at the 24 volts that we're working. And the best way to visualize that is to, well, make a spreadsheet. So all I have to do is just highlight the numbers here on the serial monitor, copy them, jump over to Excel, paste them, and there we go. We have a graph showing the anode voltage in relation to different grid voltages. Now let's say that I want to compare this 6AU6 against a different tube. And let's do it against something quite a bit different. So we'll just pop the 6AU6 out, and then we'll pop in a 6CG7, which is a very large dual triode. So the 6CG7 is all warmed up now. So if I push this little red button, we should get the results up there. Yeah, there we go. We can see that we start at 24 volts and we work our way all the way down to seven volts. Let's test the other triode in this dual triode. So let's flip the switches and then we'll push the button here. It's totally different too. I actually wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Apparently this dual triode is not very well balanced because we can see that it went from uh, 24 volts down to 12.7 volts for this triode. And if we take a look at the other triode again, we go 12 volts all the way down to seven and a half volt. So it's, it's uh, not a very well balanced triode, uh, but even still we can go ahead and copy this data and then paste it into our Excel sheet. And there we go. We can see just by looking at the graph, how different the pentode and triode react. The triode is very, very linear and the pentode is very, very sharp. This is really cool because not only can I go through and find dual triodes that are much better balanced within the two triodes that are in the same envelope, uh, but I can also compare different types of tubes against each other to see what is going to work best for the low voltage circuits that I like to build. This is just super cool. I am so happy with the way this turned out. Now, this vacuum tube tester is very much so specialized to my specific needs. But what this has done is lit a little bit of a fire underneath me. I really like the idea of a vacuum tube tester that plugs into the computer and gives real data that's made for extremely cheap. I have less than $30 worth of parts in this entire thing. But since it's only at 24 volts, it's really only useful to me. So I would like to build a cheap vacuum tube tester that tests plate current against grid voltage at different plate voltages. And this is essentially the graph that you see in a vacuum tube data sheet. So I want to make something that recreates that graph. So you can see just how far a tube has drifted from the ideal specification that's denoted in the data sheet. Uh, but in the meantime, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and uh, I hope to see you in the next episode.